What's going on, Hokie Nation? Welcome into this week's Triumph Spotlight right here on TSL Today. Our guest today is Virginia Tech quarterback Grant Wells, a transfer from Marshall. Wells started all 11 games last season for the Hokies under center. Now he gears up for his second season in Blacksburg under Brent Pry. Your quarterback, Grant Wells, coming up next on this week's Triumph Spotlight. Perfect time to remind you that today's show is brought to you by Triumph NIL. Recognized by On3 Sports as a top 20 most ambitious NIL franchise, Triumph develops custom partnerships for collegiate student athletes with members of the business community, supporters, and fans. Log on to triumphnil.com today for more information on how to engage and support Virginia Tech student athletes through NIL platforms. Let's go ahead and uh, introduce everybody on the set. I'm your host, Giovanni heater alongside me carter hill today and of course across the way quarterback grant wells grant thanks for being here man how you doing today yeah i'm doing good thanks guys for having me so i guess we'll start and, and kind of take you all the way back and and work kind of through uh your career so far at virginia tech what brought you here uh to be a hokey in the first place yeah it was quick um you know i obviously entered uh the transfer portal and i think Dece like end of december early january um of 2021 2022 so um i didn't really have any schools in mind when i entered uh but you know obviously virginia tech was quick to uh get on the phone with me and um it, it they didn't have to sell too hard for me to come here um and like i said it was quick but uh you know i'm glad i'm here diving more into it what was the portal process like for you i know you had the connections with jc price and maybe mike villagrana among some others what was kind of that portal process like that brought you to virginia tech yeah it was something obviously i was um not familiar with and really the whole country wasn't familiar with it um like i said like this thing isn't very old so uh, i don't really know how many rules there were but um i was told that as soon as my name was officially entered I was allowed to receive phone calls from different coaches, and um, I could tell when my name was entered because uh, Coach Price got on the phone <laughs> with me. He was one of the first ones, and um, he was super excited to, to get on the phone with me and, and talk with me, and um, I could tell that that relationship hadn't changed, um, you know, with him being at, at Marshall with me for those two years. So um, got on the phone with a couple of different coaches, but, um, you know, once I, once I started to talk to Coach JC and – um, Coach Pry, it was it was pretty quick. When you look at last season, you know, on the surface, the wins losses. There's so much more that goes into it than that, right? Um, and there's so much more than just a record. Um, and so we just want to ask you, what is your perspective on last season as the quarterback? Um, you know, underwhelming. Obviously, nobody wanted want, wants that record, um, and and that's no secret uh, I think we have a lot to build on that um, and, and there were a lot of moving pieces last year that um, you know obviously aren't excuses but you know they are what they are and um, you know we have a lot to build off of and I think this whole team is really excited to to take what we did last year and and really improve on it what did you learn that specifically you would like to improve on as you head into 2023 from last season or maybe before that what would you like to improve on mostly um, you know, I sat after the season and um, really the, the beginning of this this year and, and asked myself that same question. And a lot of it came down to just mentally. Um, obviously, there's there's fundamentals I need to work on. And um, a lot of that comes with learning the offense more. But um, blocking out the noise, blocking out um, understanding that I don't have to read every single comment after the games and uh, whether it's good or bad, that, you know, that's something that as a young quarterback – you know, I really wasn't very good at. Um, and then growing up, you know, becoming a more mature quarterback, I really have to ignore those comments. And um, sometimes those got to me. Sometimes I was pretty good at ignoring him. But uh, I think, you know, I, I found a, a pretty good way to ignore him. And, um, you know, I think that'll help me a lot. You're in a little bit of a unique situation, right? As the quarterback, you're you're the you're like a captain on the team, and uh, you're obviously a leader on the team. Guys looked up to you. So, what were you able to learn about your teammates and the team as a whole outside of yourself as an individual? Yeah, that that happened quick too. Um, you know, obviously, I had to learn everybody's personality, everybody's name to start in, back in January, um, and then along came their personality and how I was going to interact with them and how they like to handle different situations. Um, and then, you know, once I got that last spring, 
you know, I was really trying to work on that in the summer and in fall camp. And then, um, you know, we all voted and I was named captain, which, um, you know, that's something that, that I don't take lightly. And I was, you know, very proud of myself for that. Um, and, you know, that, that was a big learning curve because, you know, I, I knew a lot of the guys at Marshall and um, starting from with a blank canvas, you know, you have to learn, you know, 125 new guys. Uh, and I was proud of myself for, for that. And I think I've, um, you know, really built on that this year and uh, really embraced that role. You talked a lot about blocking out the noise just a minute ago, whether it be good or bad. What was the biggest difference in the noise between Marshall and Virginia Tech? Um, you know, that's a good question. I think a lot of it's the same. Um, and you know, when I say the noise, I don't, I want to make it clear that I don't mean any disrespect right, to, yeah, yeah. Oh, to the tech fans or, um, can, you know, cause, um, you know, that, you know, they mean the world to us mm -hmm. and it, as a program. So obviously we, we enjoy their, their presence and, um, their voice, but you know, for me as a, as a quarterback and, um, you know, to stay in the same lane mentally that, that I really have to just, you know, you know, stay away from that and, and really understand that that's really not my business of what they think about me. It's, it's really the guys in that locker room that, um, you know, that I take their opinion the most. Um, so yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the, the, the comments or, or whatever are a lot the same. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I think I've, that's one thing I've had to had to work on my, most of my years. Well, it feels like almost like we've, we've, we've div dove into last year to its fullest. Let's kind of turn a page, focus on the positive, and uh, look ahead to this upcoming season. I think all the Hokie Nation's very, very excited about it. You look at the puzzle pieces that have been built around you in this offense this offseason. Transfers like Ollie Jennings from Old Dominion. You got Jalen Lane in there at receiver as well. Bishal Tootin in the running back room. Who has really stood out to you that you look at them, hey, those are guys that I can count on to make big plays, give them the football, and you just just excited to play with yeah really I mean uh Tootin has made a difference in our in a running back room that really didn't need a difference um to be honest I mean you know that that room has a lot of guys that can play and and will make a difference this year uh and like you said Ali uh Jay Lane and then Quan um uh, in that receiver room have, have made plays this spring and you know I'm really excited about all those guys and, and they seem to be picking up the offense really well uh, so I think we're really excited about that. Did you ever play against Jalen Lane at Marshall when you were in Conference USA together? No. No, no. I, don't, I don't think so. Okay, okay. Well, what is – I guess how can you how can you utilize those guys, do you think? What strides do you think you can make in the offensive game because of, you know, you adding those couple guys? What what strides do you think you can make there? Yeah, well, the good thing about those – those specifically those three guys are they, they all have different, you know um, – you know, toolboxes, you know, they, they can do so many different things. Um, you know, Jay Lane can play inside and Ali can play inside and outside and Quan, you know, is, is a deep thread. And, you know, they, they add a lot to the room that, you know, has doing really well. Um, you know, the guys like Tucker and, and um, you know, Steve and, and, and those guys. So, um, you know, I think we're really excited about that. And, and, you know, obviously they add depth and, you know, you can't really underestimate depth. Um, especially when you go through spring and, and fall camp, you know, bodies are going to get hurt. And, um, you know, that's when they really make strides and learn the offense when they get thrown into it. And, um, you know, I don't think that, that it, them adding to the room is, has any negatives. How's this spring been for you so far? What's the competition in the quarterback room like? You guys have a, a large roster of quarterbacks right now, so I'm sure everybody's kind of battling a little bit. Um, there's guys battling for the third spot. There's guys battling for one and two. So uh, all across the board, it seems like a really solid room. Yeah, um, there's a lot of guys in the room, but, um, you know, we all work really well together. I mean, that that's a sign of a mature room. I've been a part of a lot, and, um, you know, when when all six or seven guys really work together and and um, you know take feedback off of one one another that that's a really good sign and um, you know with the addition of Tebow in our room and, and Coach Christ um, you know there's a different feel around the room not saying last year was bad or anything uh, but there has been some changes and you know I think the whole team has taken those 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 changes in stride and um, I think it's it's been really beneficial. You mentioned it, Tyler Bowen, now your quarterback's coach after the departure of Brad Glenn. What has that transition kind of been like for the quarterback's room? Yeah, it was quick. Um, you know, Coach Glenn called us into to the meeting room a couple days before. I think it got leaked online and, and told us he had taken the job in Cincinnati. And 
we were all super pumped for him. I think, you know, I wish nothing but the best for him. And then it was a couple of weeks um, until, you know, Coach Pry let us know that, that Coach Bowen was going to step into the room. And I think he's more excited than anybody in that room um, to because that offense is really, you know, his, you know, his baby. He talks about it all the time. I think, um, you know, he works more on that offense than anybody I've ever seen. So for him to, to really let us know what he's thinking from his mouth, um, how he wants us read, how he wants footwork done. It makes – I can already tell it's going to make the world a difference, um, but obviously we have to go out on the field and, and really show that, that it's going to make the difference. But I can already tell just from this spring um, that you know, our mind, mindset's a little bit different. It's been talked about that there's going to be a new offensive scheme, kind of a new offensive identity uh, this upcoming year. Maybe even a little bit of a switch that was attempted to be made towards the later stretch of last season. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but what can you share with us about a possible new offensive outlook uh, this upcoming season? Yeah, um, you know, a lot of it is different, but, um, you know, the core of the offense is still the same. It's still um you know, tempo, it's still different formation, different motions, different, um, trying to present new looks at the defense. Um, and, and that's, that's never going to change. Maybe, uh, some wordings here or, um, you know, who we're putting where is going to change. And, you know, I think, you know, the whole offense is, has really, um, done really well with that. I know, uh, Tebow has made an emphasis on, on how he wants his offense run and with him being in the quarterback room and, um, the whole offense drives through the quarterback. I think it really helps from the quarterback down um, of how he wants his offense. I think it, it's going to work. You mentioned a little bit, both Coach Bowen and Coach Bry have talked about they want to run the quarterback a little bit more. How does your skill set kind of fit into that, and what excites you about that? Yeah, that, that this, you know, a lot of this offense comes from the Penn State, and, um, you know, when you watch Penn State, you know, those last, literally last three, four quarterbacks have been, really runners, um, and, and, you know, that, that's been a, a staple of this offense. And, you know, one of the things Bowen likes to do is make them guard all 11 guys. Um, you know, when you just hand it off, sometimes they just, you know, don't really pay attention to the quarterback. But when the quarterback's a, uh, an asset in the run game, it it really opens up a lot. And, and then once you get the run game established, then you start throwing the ball downfield and moving the ball downfield. And, um you know, I think everybody in that room can really run the ball in, in the quarterback room. And, um, you know, when that when that happens, then, you know, the running back runs start to open up, then the play actions and then the deep shots to open up. So, um, you know, I, th I think I showed that pretty well last year that I could run the ball. Um, and I think, you know, we, we're going to grow on that even more this year. Piggybacking off of that, uh, Brent Pry has brought on Brent Davis for the spring. What has it been like working with him? Uh, he has a huge background in the option with his time at Army and other destinations as well. So what has it been like to, to work with him? Yeah, he was, um, you know, he had been around the, the program for a couple of days before, um, you know, it was released that, that he had joined. So, um, you know, obviously, you know, with a record like that, you know, obviously it comes with a, a lot of respect and, you um, you know, he's been mainly in the offensive line room, so I think that's where his heart is. Uh, so I think he's glad to be back there, and um, I'm really super excited to pick his brain, and, and um, he'll, he adds a lot to the offense. We talk about this all the time, but when you look at next season's schedule, what game maybe excites you the most? Um, well, obviously, we're going back to Huntington. <laughs> yeah. uh, <that's, laughs> that was on the tee for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm super excited about that one. And then um, – you know, I know Purdue's coming home. I, you know, my roommate Brock is, is there now, so I'm excited to see him. But I'm uh, uh, really super excited about the season. I think we have a really good schedule coming up, and, um, you know, I think we can do well. So let's take you away from football a little bit, talk about some other things. What has this journey with Triumph specifically been like for you, and uh, where can people check out some of your memorabilia that's up online and, and stuff like that? You know, it's been great. Um, you know, the thing Triumph has been done, you know, they, they've really led from the front. I think, you know, the first I've heard from them was back in spring of this time last year, which was, you know, incredible. At, you know, they were light years ahead of everybody else in the in the country. And, um, you know, that shows they have a lot of um, big name guys on their board that, um, you know, with Kevin Jones and, and all those guys that really know what it's like uh, to be a college athlete. And, 
Um, you know, if you head on over to uh, triumphnil.com, I think you'll you'll find a lot more. And I think we have some special things coming for this fall. Coach Pry had you guys very involved with the big event. We were talking about it a little bit off air with Nick. Where did that send you this weekend, and how was that experience? Yeah, I was over um, at a house on like uh, North Main Street. Uh, we were doing some some yard work, some picking up leaves and and moving fences and. <laughs> Uh, some real labor that, um, you know, we, we were excited. The practice got moved so we can have a Saturday, but then I realized we got to the house. It wasn't an off day for us. It was just as much of a workout as, as Deeds puts us through, but no, it, it was great. Um, you know, I heard some, some stories of the rest of the team go to different houses and, you know, the impact they had. So, uh, I was super excited to be a part of it. And, um, I can tell this isn't going to be the last time that happens that the football team is going to be involved with that. This is a cool question that we always like to ask and, kind of your opportunity to like make a plug too, but you know, what other future NIL opportunities would you love to be involved with? Whether that be a charity, whether that be a local establishment here in Blacksburg, you know, what, what interests you the most? I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I mean, I love to play golf, so anything in that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but you know, really, uh, anything in like the mental health, like I talked about it earlier. Um, you know, I think sports has, is, is going down that path and, um, of, of really emphasizing the mental health part. And it's such a big part of the game that really, you know, the fans, the sometimes the coaches don't even see of, of how much we have on our plate. Um, and it comes with, with the territory. I mean, we, we, we understood that when we signed on the, on the dotted line to become a quarterback that, you know, you're going to have a lot on your plate. So, um, you know, and it's really started from the NFL. A lot of the guys like coach Bone was talking about Trevor, uh, Trevor Lawrence works with with a lot of mental health coaching um, that really is just off the off the field stuff to really help them get um, their mindset in order. And, you know, I'm really excited to start working with with people like that this summer and upcoming fall. And um, so anything in that space, um, I think, can only help because I think that's where sports is headed. And uh, I think it's only for the be- only for the good. Got some fun ones for you. This is interesting. Let's say you played baseball here at Virginia Tech. What would your walk-up song be? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I heard it. Somebody on our team has it uh, right now. That little baby song where everybody claps, oh, like the K-State song. Uh, Christian Martin. He, Christian yeah, Martin. Yeah, that's baseball. a really good one. Um, I got to give him props for that. Uh, other than that, I don't know. I can't. I, I can't remember the name of mine when I was in high school, but it was really good. So I, I might have to. I might have to dig. I might have to dig back in the uh, archives to find that one. But I can't remember the name of that one. How did it go? Sing it for us. No, I can't sing it for you. But it was. Uh, it was by Future. Okay. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it no was worries. good. It was so you're good. a Future guy. I like Future. I like Drake. Um, Who's your favorite artist? Drake, Lil Wayne, and then I listen to a lot of country music, so mm-hmm. probably Sweet. like Luke Combs, Morgan Wallen. I mean, you can't miss on country music. They just music. had some great albums. Oh, they yes, they what did you think of the new Luke Combs album? I, I mean, the Morgan Wallen was the best Morgan Wallen album he's put out, and then Luke Combs dropped the best album I've ever heard out. So, really? Um, I mean, that Luke Combs album was, is, is it's a non skip. No he, doubt. Isn't he on a stadium tour right now? Yeah. I want to see him in Charlotte. This yeah, summer. I don't know yeah. what's going to happen. You may have to go down to Charlotte this summer. You're going to be here this summer, right? Heartbeat. You'll be here this summer? I will. I assume. Yeah. There you so go. you can get down to Charlotte. The one thing missing on that album for me, and it was fantastic. I wish, like, so the energy level not never got past, like, a six or a seven. I needed one, like, anthem. Like, a beer never I broke know. my heart. Yeah, that's a good. I mean, he has so many good songs. Um, oh, that one song, um, Why Are the Wild Things Grow, is one that's of the best so, songs yeah, I've yeah, ever heard in my life. Song. My, such a good song. My favorite on the album is probably See Me Now. I yeah. like that one, even but, though that's kind of one of the more underrated ones. What's like the that. best place to listen to a Luke Combs album, whether on the lake or mm. on the golf, golf course? Yeah. On the yep. golf course, it's hard to beat. Um, yeah, on the golf uh, Yeah, it has <laughs> to be that. <laughs> what's your favorite course to play here? I'm going totally off on a tangent. But, I, I, hey, um, run with it. Well, I mean, I'm, I play the, the, the river course a lot. Uh-huh, uh, yeah, TJ's so been so good to us. Uh, I know a couple guys, you know. Uh, have played there a lot so um you know that has to be uh, i play that a lot and then you know i try to get on the country club when i can if if pry lets me (laughs) on his membership (laughs) Mm -hmm. um but yeah it uh there's a lot of good courses around here what does your pregame playlist look like are you listening to country before the game or you got to be locked in uh with all the other stuff no i don't listen to country but 
Um, I'm definitely not one of the guys that listens to like upbeat, like rap. Like, okay. like I'm not like trying to get all amped up like an hour and a half before kickoff. I don't, I don't get how those those guys do it. I guess they have to do different jobs on the field, which I guess that would help. But I'm I, I just like listen to the songs I know the words to, uh, maybe to get my mind off the game, um, just for you know maybe an hour before or whatever. So, you know, oh like old but like 2010 rap just so words that i or songs that i know every word to is is really what i stick to what's your favorite uniform combo here well i mean the orange orange looks good um i heard coach doesn't doesn't yeah. love he's no, very he, traditional he's very traditional he yeah. like yeah uh, i mean the traditional has to be one of the best ones the maroon the maroon and maroon at home uh and then the white and white away is it's so clean that, I mean, you can't beat that. The white on white, I love white on white. Yeah, it's The stormtrooper look is what we call it. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. You're not the only one that their favorite, I think Ali Jennings just said last week, his favorite's the orange, and uh, and Coach Pry doesn't love the orange. Well, the orange, I don't know, the orange, I mean, I'm, the North Carolina game a couple years ago, uh, yep. and then last year, Liberty, I mean, I don't know, guys feel good in the orange, um, so maybe it, it, we could bring it out, but the traditional never, you can't miss with the traditional. Go ahead. What's your go-to pregame meal? Meal. Well, we usually have the same buffet every meal, so I kind of keep it light. Just chicken, mashed potatoes, um, sometimes steak, but um, got the protein, the carbs makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm pretty pretty basic on the meal. What's your favorite spot to eat in Blacksburg? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I don't know. This is an NIL opportunity. I know. Gold. <laughs> I know. We're putting it on a 622 team. has a really good oh steak. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Their steak is really good. Um, Bull and Bones uh -huh. is really good. They actually catered after um, the big event, which we were all super excited oh, nice. about. Um, yeah, I don't know. Mellow Mushrooms, Cloud Nine yeah. Wings are really good. It's so funny you mentioned 622. We had Liz Kitley on a couple weeks ago, and yeah. she mentioned 622, and it sparked this whole conversation about you would go there, but you're not a fan of the roundabout out there. I don't love the roundabout right there. It's a little – it's like where you're coming from Price's Fork to get on the main right. street. It's like an accident waiting to happen. Do roundabouts scare you? Yeah, well, well, no. <laughs> I, I've, never, I've never really been around roundabouts because we never had them in West Virginia, and then oh, I really? came here and – I mean, I don't know how everybody doesn't have roundabouts. It seems, I mean, they work so well. Yeah, they they do. Big I, fan of roundabouts. I love all the roundabouts, like especially around the athletic facilities. Yeah. Those, those ones are great. It's that one in particular. The transition is a little weird. But, uh, yeah, uh, that is weird. I have to go there every single day, so I, I know what you mean. Yeah, but uh, otherwise, roundabouts are great. Better than a, better than a red light. <laughs> uh, if you could play any other sport here at Virginia Tech, what would it be? Baseball. Uh, I was a big baseball guy in high school. I'd... Um, what position did you play? Shortstop. Okay. I can um, see that. Yeah, I, I, I was a big baseball guy, and I graduated early, so I didn't play my senior year. But, um, but yeah, if I had to pick another sport, it'd be baseball. Last one for you. How do you want to be remembered when your time is done here at Virginia Tech? That's a good question. Um, you know, I've always, you know, lived by just leave it better than you found it. Um, you know, that you know you, you hear that when you're four years old picking up whatever in your room leave it better better than you found it but then when you actually start thinking about it then you know when I found Virginia Tech was you know January of 2022 um and how how am I gonna leave this place better than better than um it was in January 22 and uh we have a lot of work to do um but I think it's not out of the reach so um I think if I do that, then you know I'll be happy. But um, but I think there's a lot of work to do um, before that happens, and um, you know that's one of my big motivators. Grant, thanks so much for your time. We can't wait to watch you do your thing this upcoming fall. And uh, thanks for being here today. Thank you. All thanks, right, guys. for Carter Hill, for Grant Wells, I'm Giovanni Heater saying so long from Blacksburg. That was this week's Triumph Spotlight with Virginia Tech quarterback Grant Wells. We'll see you next time, everybody. Have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.